I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. On this video, we're back on this 69 Charger. If you saw in the last video, we did full floor pans, we did the toe pans, and we did inner rockers and a front torsion bar cross member. We're working our way back on the car now, and you can see there's a lot of parts still missing on this um, car. On this video, we're gonna try to tackle some of those parts and assemble everything. What we have is we have what's left of the frame rails, They've been sandblasted and epoxied. You could see on a, a project like this, you're really gonna have to need, use a frame jig. If you look at the first video we did, I showed you how to mount this car in a frame jig, and we have certain points that when we put all these parts together, we need to reference off of. We still have to do a little work, because if you see these frame rails, they do move around a little bit because they're just pinned. But I know where they have to go. I know our reference points. I'll share with you some of our reference points. You'll have to make your own at home. But ideally, we're gonna get everything assembled on this car, test fit, and we're basically gonna take this car from a state that looks like this into to this. You see we have everything mocked up and fit in place. I did have the quarter panel on the car, but we removed it right now for video's sake to show you as we're taking the car apart. Now that everything's mocked up, we'll go ahead and mark our panels where we need to sand down to bare metal and prep for again, either welded with the spot welder or to rosette weld. What we're gonna install in this video are gonna be inner outer wheelhouse. We have the trunk drop off extensions. We have the full trunk floor floor pan and we have shackle frame rail mounts and the rear cross brake. So stay tuned on this video. I'll show you how we go about assembling it one piece at a time now that they're all test fit in place and I kind of have an idea where they're going to go to save on time sake. So we'll clean them up. I'll put them on the video and I'll show you kind of tips and tricks on how I went about test fitting it and then we'll do a final uh, thoughts on the video and a conclusion. So stay tuned. Now that we had the car all together, we're gonna to start taking apart piece by piece. What I like to do, I'll mark out where everything has to go and where my brackets are and what has to be cleaned down to bare metal. You can see I'll go ahead and get all the stickers off. A wire brush works really good right here. And then I'll go through with some wax and grease remover. But then everywhere I marked and why I do these pieces usually one at a time as they're coming apart because usually you can't get in everywhere. And there's certain areas that right now I won't drill. Like these wheelhouses, you'll have to put rosette welds down the whole center of the wheelhouse is anywhere they're gonna butt up. We're lucky enough um, in the shop to have a ProSpot PR2000 welder that I don't have to put holes, this will do a resistance weld. So a lot of these areas, like right now where I'm sanding down where the inner wheelhouse meets the trunk floor, you're gonna have to put rosette weld. So I would mark the top and bottom locations where our holes have to be. So just be aware you're gonna have to do that too. But it's easier if you take these pieces one off at a time and then you know exactly because you just took it off where your holes are versus blowing the whole car apart and trying to go back and remembering. Saying that, it's not that big of a deal if you forget an area. Go through with a wire brush on a drill and you can get it down to bare metal and same thing with the, the rosette holes. You could sit there, it takes a little bit more work, but you could, I usually drill a 1 8 pilot hole if I miss a spot, and then I'll sit there with a flat, actually spot weld cutter bit, and it doesn't have as much of a protrusive end, it's more of a flat edge. Um, so it'll sit there and drill the first level without digging through the second layer. So some tips and advice, but I think it's easier. The more you can prep now, the better off it'll be. You could see I'm also rolling that lip back a little bit more. That's going to help the two panels, the wheelhouses fit together. So another piece of advice, if you have these areas like on this floor pan, I'll do this at the trunk drop off extensions too. Sometimes if I feel like the edges aren't worked um, they're kind of rolled in. I try to hammer them back a little bit and that makes the gap between the panels just a little bit tighter. It's really, really important on the wheelhouses itself. You don't want a gap there because you're going to have to put seam sealer anyway, but that's more of an area in the future for water to get into the car. So don't be afraid to kind of modify these parts even after test fitting just to get an even little bit of a tighter fit. You can see I'm using the SCT 
on the bottom of the floor pan. Now we're on to a wire brush again, removing the stickers. I'll tell you what, these companies, they can keep their stickers off of it. Um, the tape that wraps it up. I spend just as much time taking the stickers, glue, and everything on these floor pans, quarter panels, everything. Then it takes to actually prep the whole panel. I mean, so if anyone out there on these manufacturers are listening, you don't need a sticker that never comes off. I've tried different methods again. these stickers off. It seems like they clogs up the flap disc, the grinding stones hurt the panel too much. I think the best thing to do is a slow moving wire brush and some wax and grease remover. You could see there's certain areas on this trunk floor pan that my spot welder is not going to be able to reach. So I drilled the holes. They still have some hard burrs on them. So I went out through with a little mini flap disc on a angle little angle grinder. And uh, we cleaned those burrs up. Now the SCT can run right over it and really clean the area up. The SCT, if you leave those burrs on there, it starts eating at the drum. So just be aware of that if you are grind or drilling out uh, rosette holes, that you'll probably just have to knock the burrs down. It takes a little bit of time, but I mean, same thing with here. If you I'm going over my frame rails in the areas I have to weld. I like to take off more and get more of the panel down to bare metal. I think it's just better that way, you know, and it will just go through with some eco epoxy kind of style coat, whatever we're top coating this with, what the owner wants, and then we'll just finish it off and it'll look like the same. And the whole car is going to have to be prepped anyway for before it goes to paint. But the drum, the stripping drum, leaves a really smooth surface. So I always like to put a tooth and stuff when I'm using my welder primer. So we just run over it with a DA 120 grit, one or uh, 80 grit, um, and also wax and grease remover. I take all my panels before I put the weld through panel on and we're using wax and grease remover. This is the weld through primer we're going to use on this car. I've been pretty happy with it lately i think out of all the ones i've tried this one welds the best it dries the best and it isn't like crazy in price i mean all this stuff costs a lot but it's not breaking the bank compared to some other so i really like this brand uh, you see we just put i'm really heavy on the coats i'd rather have too much of this weld through primer um then not enough, you know, some bare spots this is what's prepping your car for 10 15 20 years down the road so as i was saying we're going to address these frame rails there have a pinhole up through the bottom of them but once we cut the floor pan and hold back in the car off you saw in the video they do move so what i want to do i made these jig points when this car came in the shop so i know that these frame rails are supposed to sit on these bars from the factory car as it came here as tight as they can so what we're going to do before we assemble any of the frame rails i'm going to go ahead and cinch these frame rails down and you see it kind of pulls the frame rails over to the right the more you cinch them down so that's something i know their level be prepared to spend a lot of time fine tuning and adjusting this that's going to be pulling parts off putting parts back on putting the next part off realizing it's slightly off and then putting both parts back on it's it's a constant battle right now you see i'm using the bumper brackets as my reference point from the cross rail piece to the rear frame rails the main thing on the cross rail replacement frame rail replacement all this stuff is you want to make sure this stuff goes into into the car back in the factory location because this is what's driving the whole rest of the project you don't want this car dog walking going down the road crooked you don't want handling issues so having a good base foundation like when we started building this jig for this car and i showed you in the first episode how to do that really makes this part of the job so much easier especially when there's so much play in the back of these frame rails when the quarter panels and everything else are removed so we're on to the shackle frame mounts. You can see I also have a bar coming off our main pin from the frame rail that basically that shackle frame piece rests on. So I know that's the height in relation from the frame rail to where the shackle frame extension has to mount. I also centered that bar off the shackle itself and you could see in this video and i put a little notch where the center of the shackle was supposed to be located so it's kind of from the angle here it looks like it's a little bit off but it was straight on both sides match exactly 
uh, spot on and that's exactly what you need to make sure because you don't want your shackles one forward or back from the other that's going to create different loading and unloading characteristics and it's very minor but it does in a lease spring car so that's what i'm saying the key here is everything needs to be straight everything needs to be square and a lot of this stuff comes in the initial prep phase before you rip this car apart don't take a sawzall and just cut the whole back end of the car off and hope for the best later unless Unless you have a jig and I didn't have a charger jig so we built it off this car knowing the car was straight and solid you see how much uh, play is in these shackle pieces when we take off this ratchet strap so until we get the floor pan and some structure in the back of this car I'm gonna go ahead and ratchet these down to the reference point you see I'm adjusting both sides now once we get the floor pan structure and everything squared in the back end I'm not saying that these frame rails aren't gonna have to go up or down a little bit we do shift the frame rail in the back lower part of the car up and down in relation to getting the quarter panel and to door gap uh, straight and um, align properly so if you lift up it's going to close the top of the door gap and vice versa if you lower it now we're talking about an eighth of an inch movement that does a lot in the front so as long as you move both sides together and everything else is jiving and working together I'm not saying that it has to be in the exact location especially with the aftermarket parts but you want a good relation from each other and you don't want to be completely way off three four inches higher or what you definitely don't want is side to side movement you don't want it to be you know you want it squared up as you can see we already started the welding of the frame rail pieces and we're going to just button up the whole back of this car we got the base of the car in place and then now once we put the floor pan on we're not going to be able to really get in here and do any of these welds so i'm confident enough this is why we test fit everything initially beforehand and we screwed everything in that I know these frame pieces, there's going to be no surprises when we put the trunk floor pan in. It's already been test fit. I marked some holes when I use sheet metal screws and now as long as my holes line up, I know everything's back to where it was when everything's in the test fit phase. You see I'm pulling out those, screw hole, those screws right now and we'll go back through and tack it up. On the back of the car, you see I didn't drill the holes. My spot welder can reach in there, no problem. So we'll go ahead right through and use the spot welder on here, the resistance welder. Um, right here, you would just continue rosette welding. Um, there would be holes there. This would be the same thing that you're doing at the rest of the process. Just drill your holes and just weld it up and then take your sand sanding disc and grind it down smooth. So you could see on here I put a lot more welds in the factory did especially on these frame pieces I really I run my power high you can really see the spots from here but I'm getting good penetration on both sides and I'm probably putting two three times more welds actually any car I've ever built I've never had an owner say look I want to look exactly factory usually we put twice as many welds from the factory it just makes me feel better knowing that the car is a little bit more solid this B body floor pan is huge. So having the extra help from my wife was really, you know, beneficial here. But you also can see the trunk pan does not have to go in the back of this car. If the wheelhouses are out, we were able to leave the tail panel on and slide it right in through the sides. That might help someone out in making a decision on in the future on what you would do. Saying that. Personally, I don't also agree with this. I would have probably taken the tail panel off and put full quarter panels on this car and just put the trunk pan in from the back. But now that the trunk pan set in place, I went ahead and we put our reference screws, our sheet metal screws. You could see a couple of them mostly in the center braces. And what I'm gonna go do now, I'm welding up from the center in the front of the floor, uh, trunk pan and work my way out to the wheelhouses on both sides and welding what my spot welder can't do. I also want to push the metal out even though it's screwed in. I just do this as habit that we don't want a high spot to come up anywhere. So I'm taking care of my MIG points in the center first 
and work my way down one at a time. I didn't have to usually take a body hammer on any of this area. It was all set down pretty close. Um, actually, this AMD trunk pan fit really, really well. I'll go over it too. Um, the cross piece in the back, I think was a good mark piece. I believe the two frame extensions might have been AMD. Uh, the trunk floor pans AMD. The inner wheelhouse is AMD and the outer wheelhouse is a good mark brand. So some of these parts came with the car and like a lot of these projects, the owner said, um, and he didn't know that, oh, it's the car's not really rusted that bad. It needs, you know, a trunk pan, but a couple other patches there and should be good. Knew about some of the frame stuff, but, you know, once you open that box of that can of worms that these things they're all like it i mean you you once you blast them you just find rust in places that you never knew about so be prepared if you're going to take on a project like this um that it just prepare for the worst prepare for plant us uh, replacing everything and doing that it just they get really bad but back to the trunk pan you see i welded the center and what i did it was kind of hard to get the um, spot welder in there, but we were able to get it with some, you know, tri tips and tricks. But we run down, you could see right here a close up on the spot welds and what they look like and how many I put in there. It really does a good job. And the spot welder clamps at the same time that it's also resistance welding. It just, it does make this job so much easier. And really the outcome, it almost looks like if the untrained eye opens this trunk you wouldn't see any weld holes or anything it looks almost like a factory um, job that was built in here so we worked our way down the frame rails um, both sides we got the inner outer frame rails you know the shackle extensions and now i'm working on the tail p the tail panel um trunk floor to the cross member piece basically so we're just same thing working in the center I would do this just like I'm MIG welding, work in the center and work my way out. More than anything else, the spot welder really just helps up on this portion, the cleanup. You know, it it's about the same to MIG a hole and use the spot welder because it actually has to hold it for a little bit longer to make sure the weld cools. All this is all um, pre-calculated by the machine itself. But so we'll go back through now and I'm um, touching up. There's a couple areas in the center right there that the spot welder, there's just no way with the cross member piece I could get to. So I did have to MIG weld those. But we'll go back through now. We're going to clean up the MIG welds. There's many ways you can do this. Honestly, the belt sander seems to work the most efficient and give you the nicest job for me lately with an 80 grit. I like to slow down the belt a little bit so I don't burn up the sandpaper and create too much heat. But, you know, you've seen, if you've seen my videos in the back, I'll take, you know, grinding stones. You know, there's so many uh, flap this, so many ways to do it. Um, On to the wheelhouses now. You see, I know where these wheelhouses were screwed together on the car because, again, we used our reference screws. So now that they're off the car, to me, it's easier assembling them one piece. And same thing with you at home. I would personally MIG weld this thing together knowing it fit on the car. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, you need to make sure the quarter panels and everything are on the car, that these are in the right spot. And it's a compromise. Being that they're two different brands, there are some variances, especially down down the center they're not that bad but they're definitely not perfect but saying that make sure your quarter panels fit your wheelhouses and now you could confidently weld them up and then we're going to go ahead and reinstall them back on the car you see i'm using the hammer and dolly from where i opened that gap out on top i'm just closing it back in the spot welder does it but i'm just helping the spot welder along because the spot welder won't get a good weld unless and same thing with your mig welder you're not going to get good weld in there if there's any gap so you want to make sure those two pieces are touching you see i also put weld through primer on the inside of the two wheelhouses where they join but the outside until I weld it there is no weld through primer once that job's done because I always want a good weld on it same thing with you I would just leave the weld through primer off and then now you see I'm installing the wheelhouses I went back through and reapplied the weld through primer on the outside of the wheelhouse now so just a little tip there you're going to see on the front of this wheelhouse we are going to have to MIG weld I'm just kind of right now finding my holes, my screw holes, knowing where this whole wheelhouse assembly had to be. So we're gonna clamp it in place 
and I'm kind of still readjusting. You see, the the trick to these chargers and really the B bodies is you want to put the front in and you kind of walk the back up and kind of kind of shake it in and just adjust it. And what I do, kind of roll it back a little bit. Onto the driver's side wheelhouse, you can see we got a bunch of rosette welds going up from the inner structure. A lot of those big holes were actually where we drilled out the factory um, spot welds. Like I said previously, I like to add a lot more support and weld holes than the factory would. So you can see I added a couple more in there. I started out, you know, building race cars and everything else. So my mind works that everything needs to be stronger. You know, that the stronger it is, the less flex you have, the better the car is going to ride, it's going to handle, etc. So I usually take that even on my restoration builds. It's just hard to get out of that mentality. Now, I didn't run into any of this, but I want to tell you, if you're putting these cars together, you see that outer wheelhouse right now fits right against a bracket, and I'm barely moving up the floor. We're talking the hole was a sixteenth of an inch off that I just kind of pushed it up a little bit. But if you're coming up there and you see that top bracket going to outer wheelhouse that there's an inch or two of gap in there, stop what you're doing. You have a problem on this car. Something's moved. These parts, yes, you have to modify them. You have to bend them. You have to kind of help them along. But you shouldn't be trying to close up one inch, two inch gaps. You shouldn't be cutting off a half an inch off a rocker panel. You shouldn't be, you know, modifying the wheelhouse by moving it in three inches just red flags you see even right here we had to do this trunk drop off extension and i had to kind of pull the wheelhouse back a little bit tap a little bit here or there but it really does fit good most of these parts i i think they get a bad rap a lot of people say oh well these parts fit like junk you know blah 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 even the good mark parts i'm i'm not a fan of good mark parts i'll tell you that right now i've been especially in this video series it made my um idea of good mark parts even worse and we'll go over some more of that on the quarters in the future but even their parts with a little bit of work and a little bit of help i mean we're talking we're cutting a 16th of an inch eighth of an inch off you know just pulling it a little bit they fit really well we're not cutting any major modifications right here same thing i just want this trunk drop off extension to just fit in there a little bit tighter so we're just modifying that those um, pieces where they just join to each other and just pushing them out a little bit to get that tighter gap. Right here is exactly what I'm saying. You could see the front of this trunk drop off extension is just a little bit low. So what we did, a board and a jack, and the good thing about the jig, we have all the weight of the car and that jig weighs about 1500 pounds just the i-beams and everything itself so really it's almost like an additional weight that holds the car down so we can apply a lot more force and really jig it up what i was saying we test fit our quarter panels now nothing is welded on this car i need to make sure everything is good once we're aware of that and we're going to do those quarter panels in the next video series but we're focusing on this inner structure. Now that we know those quarter panels, tail panel, everything's going to work where it is. Now we can weld up. You don't want to weld this stuff up in the future and come to find out your quarter panel, again, is a half an inch off. It shouldn't be, but this is just the, the insurance policy that we're making sure. It only takes, what, 15 minutes 30 minutes max to put on both quarters and and really you're going to put the quarter panels on anyway so you're just prepping for the next job right now so you have to do the work anyway you're just going to have to throw them up an extra time or two so you're talking five ten minutes you know each side just to ensure that nothing's right but if you don't do that to try to fix this is going to cost you hours and hours down the road you see with these wheelhouses, I decided to go ahead and weld them to the trunk floor first. Uh, we're using a pro spot with a wheelhouse attachment right here. But the reason we're doing that is I know everything else fits really well. I had the pro spot already out and I'm just kind of working my way to the trunk floor. You could weld it on the inner structure first. I've done that plenty of times. But you see, I probably have, what, eight, ten screws from the inner structure to the wheelhouse in all the brackets this thing is not moving anywhere so i'm kind of open on what direction i go ahead and weld it be aware once you weld these wheelhouses to the trunk and the trunk drop off extensions 
that takes a lot of your adjustability out of the back of this car. It's going to really support everything, but you can't move the trunk floor up and down. So if your quarter panel door gap has to be adjusted, you're very limited. That's why we test fit before we weld this part. It's not just about the front and back movement. It's about also the up and down movement. Now that we welded the whole bottom of the inner wheelhouse and the trunk drop off extension, we're going to go ahead and work from the center and start welding the top. You see I got the MIG welder since the pro spot can't reach it and we're just working our way down through all the rosette holes we filled in. On these holes you can see there's a couple areas where I have to stay on there a little bit longer because the rosette holes are a little bit bigger and also when we are air chiseling this out we did rip some of the metal. So it's not a big deal. We'll just go through and fix it with the MIG welder and then clean it up with the grinder. Another reason for welding the wheelhouses together before installing them on the car is now we can just focus on the inner structure to one wheelhouse versus trying to figure out how to weld three pieces of metal and tackling it from both sides. That extra step makes this part easier. You saw early in the video how we installed both the inner outer wheelhouse as one unit. If for some reason you're keeping the inner wheelhouses and just doing the outer wheelhouses, I did a video on a 1973 Dodge Challenger just doing the outer wheelhouses where we actually just welded the outer wheelhouse on the outside of the inner structure and just basically welded up there and then welded down the center of the wheel tubs. That's another way to kind of cheat on these outer wheelhouses where if you don't have to split the two seams it won't be a hundred percent factory but it'll save you a little bit of time the last part of wheelhouses that we're going to have to weld up is the trunk supports for the front that go under the deck filler panel and kind of really hold the height of the whole rear end up um, I normally would not weld these up if I was doing full quarters because we'd want to adjust our trunk to the deck filler panel area. But since this car is already preset and there's really not going to be any adjustment because we're only doing half quarters, we're going to just leave it the way it is. As requested by the owner, we're going to go ahead and reinstall some old brackets on the back of this charger. We're going to do the jack bracket, the gas tank brackets, and the spare tire bracket. Normally, I recommend to a lot of owners that we just go ahead and buy the brackets. I also did recommend to this owner, and he was adamant about keeping them. As far as how I work, I work by the hour, so really by the time I spend the labor on taking these brackets off, sandblasting them, and really they're still pitted in rough shape, you're about the same price as a brand new bracket. So it's not like we're trying to keep the car completely original since everything else in the back of this car has been replaced anyway but to each our own we did save these brackets we did cut them off there was minimal pitting on some of them i made the owner aware of that and we went ahead and sandblasted them and then reinstalled them getting them off you just see i'm just cutting around the edges that's how the factory weld them on and then right there where there's a couple spot welds i'm just pulling it back up if you haven't seen the video of the charger this is what we were dealing with really the whole bottom of the charger everything was rusted pitted really bad it just everything was eaten up i know this video started and the car was all cut apart so if you're interested go back to the first video and check out where we remove everything on this charger that we are replacing right now Here's the gas tank brackets. This is hit or miss on some of the floor pans and parts depending on years and depending on manufacturers whether they come with these brackets or not. So the key here, I've said this in past videos, don't throw anything away on these cars. You never know when you're going to need them. So we just ran out to our parts pile for the charger and just grabbed these brackets. Here's a picture of those brackets after the sandblasting. You see they're not perfect, but after they're welded in the car and they have seam sealer and weld through primer and the body shop takes care of it, they'll look just fine. Now, the next step in this project and the final step really is gonna be go through front to rear on everything we've installed, grind down all the welds, double check, make sure we didn't miss any holes where screws were in there and everything else, and just finish out this job before we move on to the next installation on it. So that's what I'm doing right now. We'll just take the belt sander, take the grinder, take some flap disc, and just clean everything up. The good thing about this project is really half the grinding is already done. I did do the trunk pan earlier just because I knew these wheelhouses would get in the way and be harder for me to climb in there. So I really just have the wheelhouses to clean up and I'll work my way underneath the floor pan to just double check everything there. Because this car 
Personally, I want to look as good from the bottom as it does from the top and have a lot easier on the bodywork face. Here's a few images of the whole job installed with the bare metal still all exposed. I'm going to go ahead and put some e-coating on it, but right now I just really want to show you the job and how the rosette welds work and how the spot welder works and everything with the brackets installed in its bare metal phase before everything's covered up and really kind of hidden with the black e-coating paint. Here's some shots underneath. Like I said, we try to make the underneath as good as the top if not better and you really see where the spot welds look almost factory just pinched together and it makes cleaning up this whole area a whole lot easier in the long run while you're laying under there. Right now on this job I'm just using a VHT e-coat. It basically is a single stage and uh, we're applying it directly over bare metal and all this is going to do is really just protect the metal from flash rusting. When the body shop does this whole trunk install they're going to have to sand it down, scuff it up and really paint it the color choice of the owner or even a chassis color but all in all this is going to match the same kind of coating that's already comes from the factory on these new panels we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video on the rear end install uh, the inner structure for our 69 charger if you have a 68 to 70 charger i hope this video helped you we kind of really dove in deep and got real technical in the instance on where things got to go, how to weld things up to order, and how to kind of assemble everything. What I didn't show was um, we're going to do another part to this video really, and we're going to do the outer quarter panels, tail panel, and the corner brackets um, on a different installation. Really, I say it's a two-part because you really can't weld this corner here in before you get that stuff at least test fan place because if you move this out that bracket gap down there is going to be too open closed so really everything's got to be done one time everything you saw on the pictures was aligned on this car so i was confident enough to weld it where it is knowing that we'll clean up those brackets to do a final install but they're going to fit all in all so if you have another b body car um it's going to be slightly different with the trunk drop off extensions just be aware of that everything else though for the most part should be very similar in the installation um, hopefully these videos are helping you out uh, we're putting them out there you know it's a lot of work um, but if you do it just do it right uh, spend the time put your car in a frame jig you know you could see how we have to pull pry and really kind of modify some of these parts but all in all when we do that these cars really do look good so if you like our channel, please subscribe to it, comment, let us know what you think. Um, we're trying to always make them slightly better. And every day we learn a little bit more about different cars that we work on and tips and tricks to really make the whole process easier. So we'll share those as we go along with you and we'll see you on the next video. I'm Rick from Cartage Classic Cars.